Gene Schiavone, thank you so much for coming on. Drove all the way down here from Essex to talk about being a world famous ballet photographer. How does one become a ballet photographer? Um, there are a lot of great photographers in the world. The one thing about ballet is you need access. So when you talk about all the technical skills and everything that's required to do this job, without the access, um, it's, it's impossible to so do. So you start in corporate, you, right. you sell a business, right. and then you pick up a camera. When did you pick up a camera? I, I've been with a camera since I was a kid, so it's always been something I've done. I was the guy that was chasing you around trying to take your picture. Oh, so you were like, you know, I was here's like, a model, here's a model. No, he, here's, here's somebody that looks interesting. I'm going to take their photograph, and they keep saying, get the camera out of my face. I was that guy. Okay, so you had to do this. So, right. so how did you gain access into the ballet world? Uh, my wife. She was very involved in uh, American Ballet Theater in New York, probably for 20 years. I was never interested, never involved. And uh, she said one day, you know, I have to go to a fundraiser with her in New York, and I did. And I sat next to some of the dancers, and they were really interesting people. And she got me to go to a performance. And I saw the dancers on stage. And because I met them, it became very interesting. It became a connection because I talked to them and I saw them on stage. So it was more interesting than just uh, going without that. Um, and then they have American Ballet Theater has a second company where they have trainees that they bring in. And they work with them for a year. Uh, and they tour like a regular company. But they had nobody to photograph them because it's, it's all budget stuff. There was no money in the oh, budget to photograph, yeah. to photograph the kids. So I said, yeah, I'm retired. I'll tour with them. And I toured with them for two years, uh, went all over the world, and, um, and I developed the skills that were necessary, the technical skills. All right, what are the skills? Let's look at a first picture of okay. some of the things that, that you have shot. Mm -hmm. Now, this is amazing. Caught in mm -hmm. midair, perfectly in focus. How do you, how do, you do this? I'm a professional. Well, I, that's why I'm having you on, yes. <laughs> the, but uh, how much practice does it take uh, to get that you know, photograph? It, it's instinctive. Um, you need to know about the light, you know, the white balance and the lighting and the, 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 the ISO and the grain, and you try to reduce the grain and all the technical stuff. But to get that shot, it's, it's timing. Everything is timing. And I can't explain it to you, but I have really good timing. So well, that's a good thing. That, that's what you need in a in shot like that. Can you look at this picture and be a critic? Is it perfect, or did you miss something? Um, no, it's, it's, it's a fairly perfect photograph. Uh, that's um, Svetlana Zakharova, one of the top dancers in the world, and David Hallberg, who was, used to dance in New York and is now dancing in Russia. And where was uh, this taken, in America or somewhere I else? I took that uh, at Bolshoi Ballet, was at Lincoln Center three weeks ago, and I took that photo there. All right, let's go so. to the next one. This is amazing. That's another timing shot. Um, and you don't get it, this again. Was this practice, or was this an no, actual No, 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 everything is one shot. shot. Yeah, everything is one shot. You don't say, could uh, you take it again? No, no, <laughs> because I'm sitting in the back of the orchestra watching the performance with, you know, 2,000 people in the, in the theater. That was a studio shot. And um, that girl is with Marinsky Theater in uh, St. Petersburg, Russia. Um, Do you have relationships with all of these dancers so that you, they, they trust you to be where you are they, in the studio? Uh, you know, they know, they know me and they feel comfortable with me. And a dancer like that, I, I photographed her over 10 years now. Um, that's uh, Marinsky Theater. Um, that was taken in California when they were touring uh, two years ago. Um, I, I love that shot because it's so, they're all so perfect. You know, you look down that line and everybody's looking the same way and their feet are all the same and it's, uh, it's, it's one of my favorite shots. How many shots do you take per performance? Seven, eight hundred. And uh, out of that seven or eight hundred, it, it probably gets down to about 60 or 70 that I say have some possibilities. And out of that, I might pick 25 or 30 that everything is perfect. The problem with, with dance photography is that if, if every finger isn't in line, if everything isn't perfect, um, I may think it's good, but the dancer may not approve it. Do they so. have to approve of these photos before they're sent around the world? Some of, some of them do. It if you're a principal dancer, you have the right to approve your photographs. If you're core members, the company usually approves them. Where have your travels taken you? Where have you shot? You, and you've been at it how many years? Almost 20 years or uh, so? 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. Where have you traveled? Where have you shot? Um, I, I traveled to Finland. I traveled to, in the last uh, year and a half, I've been to London, Milan, and La Scala, uh, Prague, uh, St. Petersburg, Russia. I travel around a lot in the country, within the country. Um, just got back from you know, five days in California with a Russian company performing out in Southern California. Toughest assignment you've ever had? 
the, the dancers just won't work with you or or they're putting you in a theater where you don't want to be or do you have total access the uh, I have total access the uh, the things have become difficult if, if you're uh, when I shoot the Met I'm shooting what they call a director's booth I'm shooting through so soundproof glass mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about shutter noise so that's that's I have real freedom there if I'm in uh, city center in New York I'm shooting in the audience and the big thing is sound so I'm very conscious of the sound because people paying good money for tickets they don't want to sure. hear you clicking and so I, I those are those are difficult situations where I have to deal with the sound you should invent a silencer well I have a silencer but they only work okay and if you have one violin playing very very low music and you don't want to hear that click I hold my breath when I shut when I hit the shutter you know you said you've taken more than 600,000 photos right what are you going to do with them? I, I'm not sure. I mean, my thinking was that this will carry me into my old age. I can sit. What's, ha what's happening is technology is changing. So pictures that weren't good seven or eight years ago with the new, the new programs oh, today, sure. I can go back and redo them and get good photographs out of them. And I was going to ask you about that. How do you feel about retouching photos? Um, you don't retouch ballet photos, meaning you, you adjust the contrast or the color uh, or get rid of some of the grain, but you never touch position because it has to be exactly, I mean, these are historical photographs. They have to be exactly as it appeared on stage. So you don't, play, you don't move people's arms. You don't, you know, get rid of stray hairs. You don't, you, know, you just correct it so it looks good, but you never change the content. Is there anybody like you out there doing this kind of work right now, or are you the, the main guy? No, there are four or five. Most companies have their own photographers. I mean, uh, Royal Ballet in London has their own photographer. It's been, it, it, some of them are former dancers, and, and a lot of people say to me, have you ever danced because you're timing and everything, and I just, I have not. Perhaps in a former but life. Maybe I have. Maybe <laughs> I've just dreamed it. Um, but a lot of the uh, companies have former dancers that have gone into photography. Um, so so there, are, there are some number of people. You don't hear a lot about them because it's all, you know, it's all kind of backroom stuff. We've all gained access, so you must all right. know each other. Right. Well, we do to some extent. Is there a competition where you're all together in a, yeah, in a theater? Yeah, and, and you're always trying to get the better shot, you know? Describe so, some of those moments to me. Well, I mean, when we did, uh, there's a press call at Bolshoi Ballet at Lincoln Center two weeks ago, and the photographer's there from some of the newspapers. You know, Times photographer was there, uh, some of the other generic time photographers. And everybody's looking for position, and you know, where am I going to stand? And gee, he's over there. Should I be there? Maybe he's smarter than I am. You know, you go through the whole process in your mind. But you know, the proof is in the in the results. Is there of those six hundred thousand photos? Is there one picture that stands out to you that that you said this is just awesome? This is this is the best shot I've ever taken. I haven't found that shot yet. So you're a perfectionist. I, I, you know, I, I try to get clear pictures with low grain, with perfect timing, and sometimes you get them, and sometimes you don't. In your and wildest imagination, would you know that you would be doing this later in life? Not at all. I mean, 15 years ago, I would wouldn't even go to a ballet. I mean, that was girl stuff. That was you girl know? stuff. <laughs> it, it was girl stuff. You know, I mean, I. But I, when you when you get involved in it and you see the the athleticism of this. And the training, I and mean, people spend their whole lives, you know, from six or seven years old to the time they're 20, just with this concentration. Um, and you find the dedication people have to, to, to perform this. It's amazing. I mean, they give up a lot. They, most of the dancers, in fact, I work with a dancer in a studio today who's homeschooled. Many, many of them are homeschooled just to have all this time to perfect their craft. Is there, is there a dancer on the world stage that you have struck up a relationship with that you just see grace and style, I don't know, man or woman, that you really just love photographing this person because of their perfection? Um, there are a lot of those people. Uh, because at the top level of ballet, there's some number of, you know, 10 or 12 or 15 people that, that are all strive, striven to get to the top, and they're all at the top. Um, I enjoy different personalities. This week in California, I was with uh, Natasha Asipova, who's, who's one of the top dancers today. And she has so much energy, and she lights up the stage. So it's, it's fun when I go to photograph her. I spent four days with her this, this, year, this week in California. And it's a pleasure. She doesn't speak much English. She's very shy. Uh, but when she comes out on the stage, it's like, you know, it's so much energy. She just takes over the stage. 
Is there a time in your life where you can say, and we should also say you also shoot the Rockettes in New York, which I find New York City Rockettes, yeah. Yeah. They're totally different. All classically trained ballet dancers for the most part. So how do you react to them differently than you do ballet? Um, first of all, it's all, they're almost overlit, so it's very easy. You know, a lot of bright lights, a lot of, um, and it's just different. I mean, you try to get their extensions. You know, everybody wants to see that shot down the line, of roll course. the legs together. That doesn't happen very often. Um, but every once in a while you get lucky and uh, it, it's just, there's just too many girls to, to do that. But it's, it's, it's just fun. The Rockettes are fun. Where have you found your photographs ending up? You were telling me in movies, Disney, wh where are they all ending up? Uh, most of, most of the, the work that I do, if you Googled me, you would find hundreds of published photos, mostly press. So New York Times, Washington Post, uh, Wall Street Journal, you know, they, the reviews tie in with my, re, reviewers tie in with my photographs for their reviews. So I'm, I'm very well published in terms of those kinds of publications. Um, I'm published in a lot of books that have done in various companies that they've used my photographs. Uh, and I was saying that there's a new TV show coming out that Go ahead a and bunch plug of, it. Uh, it's called Flesh and Bone. <laughs> it's a ballet miniseries, I guess, uh, um, that's, that's taking place, that's, that's filming now. It's filming in Astoria, I believe. And they bought a number of my photographs to have as sets in the background, props and so forth. So right. this is definitely your act too. You also do something that's very interesting to me. You photograph dancers in cemeteries. Tell me about this. How did this start? Um, it started because I was, in, I was in Prague a number of years ago at the old Jewish cemetery in Prague. And I, I looked at these beautiful sculptures and uh, because the European crypts, they have the crypt and then they have a sculpture on top of it. So I said, what if, can I take a person and make it look like part of the stone sculpture? And that was kind of the origin original goal. And I tried that once or twice. And I put some texture in the, in the, the person and I, and I attempted to make them look like the sculpture and it, it looked pretty good. And then I found that cemeteries are just really very quiet, very inviting places, the connection to the history. I love the architecture. Um, and the, uh, the, the sculpture that's there. And I photograph in cemeteries that have a lot of, I call it texture, meaning when you look at it, not just the lines of tombstones, but where they have buildings in the background and spires and a lot of stuff. So when you put somebody in front of that, you know, you ask the question, who is that person and why is she there? And if you can evoke that kind of thought, then I think I've succeeded somehow. So you're moving dancers around on a stage, but it's in a cemetery. Are these finding some acclaim? Are people finding these photographs? Um, I haven't done much with them. Um, I haven't really shown them anyplace. So uh, uh, one publication followed me one day and they sent a reporter that covered me mm -hmm. and they did a piece on it and I thought it was pretty interesting. Anything coming up that you're just so excited about or have you done it all already over these 15 years? Uh, a lot of my work today is, is repetitive in the sense that my job is to get the best production photos I can get. So every ballet has certain moments that you need to capture that, that tells you that, what the ballet is. So I try to get that. But what I find really interesting is that if I've shot something, like this weekend I shot three performances, and the last performance I shot from the wings, and I tried to get uptight, more, more emotional photographs, more photographs that signify the, the mood of the ballet or the personality of the dancer. So instead of getting full body shots, I just got in real tight and you, you know, I, I want to see him sweat. I want to see them work. And uh, I want to see him do a spin and I want to see the, the droplets flying off their face. And those, I find those more interesting. Did you get what you wanted? I got what I wanted. I, I love did. that. You also said you like working with young dancers. Why? I like the energy. Um, I started uh, a couple of years ago doing sessions with, you know, private sessions with, with young dancers. In Connecticut and, places? Well, I, I started, uh, when we were in Florida, mm -hmm. there was a great studio in Naples, Florida, and I put something on Facebook, and I, I said, well, let's see if somebody wants to do something, and I got, I was flooded with requests. So I decided I'd do four-hour private sessions, you know, a number of costume changes, uh, from audition photographs, headshots, to just more creative things, and, uh, and I've opened a studio in Essex, Connecticut, and I'm doing that here now. So I'll do that half the year in Connecticut. Um, I do a lot of commercial studio work, but it's, it's for a specific product or job. These here are more artistic, I guess. Well, 
You, congratulations on your act too, because it's just awesome. And thanks for making the world a better, a be more beautiful place by taking all these photographs. Thanks so much for coming on, Gene. It was great. Thanks. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.